Hi, this is Christian Arnold Golf, and today we're going to be talking about the Hole 19 Golf app. I've been using Hole 19 now for approximately two years, and I thought it'd be a great idea to share some of my findings with you guys so you could see whether you wanted to stick with the free version or upgrade to the premium version of the app. Now, with Hole 19, the basic option is essentially an app where it allows you to upload your course, have a look at the maps. And as you finish each hole, log in your scores and your putts. You're able to keep record of all your scores for all the rounds that you've played. This is not the same as the premium version that allows you to track shot by shot along with other features. The premium pro, which is the membership that I have, allows you to do quite a lot more things. The first one is hole change. It's not a big deal. It essentially just saves you having to get your phone out and press a button. It's, it's not something that I would say has been a particularly premium product. Uh, shot tracking, however, that is very, very useful and something that I used for the last 18 months or so before I've also got other apps to assist me in my golfing journey. Shot tracker essentially just allows you to see the distance from your last shot. So uh, for example, if you're off the first tee, you can press default tee and then hit your shot. Then as you walk to your next shot, it will be able to track the distance. This is somewhat useful, particularly for mid and high handicappers. If you know roughly the distance of your clubs, it does help you find a ball, perhaps in the rough where it's not easy to find. You will know roughly where it landed and you can tell from the tracker what the distance is from your last shot. It also allows watch scoring, which means that if you have a watch that is compatible, you can just simply keep the scores on your watch. I think that's a fantastic app if you're not interested particularly in the shot by shot tracking and you just want a quick and easy way without having to get your phone out your bag or out your pocket every home. If you're an Apple user, you also get augmented reality. Now this is something I don't have because I'm an Android user, but it allows you to have a 360 view of the hole and something which is very submersive and could be a very cool feature, particularly if you're new to a course and you want to see where a tree may lie or where how deep a bunker is, it gives you a bit more information. You can add notes to your round so that the next time you play, you can leave a little note for yourself. For example, take the three wood off the tee. The handicap simulator is the main reason why I paid for the premium pro for hole 19. I was not a member at a golf club at the time when I first started my golfing journey. And I really wanted something that would give me some kind of balance to my scoring. I could play with my friends and know that we were roughly, you know, in the same kind of ballpark with um, what my handicap should have been, even though I wasn't playing as a member. Club Statistics is a fantastic app, so it logs all your shots for each club over time it produces a lot of very useful data for example how accurate you are with your driver how good you are at your green approach how your putting is and it really does give you a breakdown it's not massively in depth it's not as in depth or as intuitive as something like arcos but for 39.99 and particularly for a high handicapper or mid handicapper it does give you that little bit of information that you may need. For example, you might be missing fairways all the time to the right and not think you have a slice. You probably have a slice or you're aiming wrong. It's something that you could work on. Same for putting. If you see that your putting is going up to 2.53, you really need to get some help on that to reduce your handicap. However, if it was down to 1.8 and your greens and regulation was awful, then it gives you something to work on there. By paying the premium, it ensures you also get no ads and you also get priority customer service. Now, I know from my experience of dealing with Hole 19 when I've had some issues in the past with the GPS at my local golf course, they were fantastic at their response time and answering any queries that I had. The highlights part of the premium pro package, I don't really understand why it's there. Surely you know what your best hole was, surely you know what the highlights of your day were, but it's there anyway and you're not paying any extra for it and it's part of the package. So I'm gonna just go have a look from my phone now and show you some of the features on the app itself so that you can see how it works. So when you open up the screen, it goes to the courses tab down the bottom and this will show all the uh, most played courses in your area, the quickest to be played, top rated, challenging courses, longest courses, shortest courses, most popular. So this really does give you some um, background into the courses in your area that perhaps you're not aware of and you haven't seen. Interesting, it also gives every course a star rating. So perhaps there might be a little hidden gem that could be nearby that might be worth playing that you were not aware was available to you. 
I really like this feature for the nine hole course selection option. I think it's something that a lot of people are not aware of or might just want to have a quick game, uh, particularly high handicappers who are not confident yet in playing an 18 hole. To have the list down there of the nine hole golf courses, I think is very accessible to all. Now, if we go over to the profile, you'll see me there. Uh, and after all, I am the boy standing in front of a golf course, asking it to love him. <laughs> As you can see, it has your average score. I have nearly 120 rounds of golf logged into hole 19 and my average is 99.8. It shows my handicap as 21.8. That is my actual handicap. Don't be fooled by the 16.2 number down below. This is not my actual handicap. As you well know, playing by yourself can be a lot easier sometimes. Also, I'll be honest, sometimes I give myself a mulligan and I don't tell anyone about it because it goes in the hole 19 app. It doesn't hurt anyone. It's just down to me. I want to show you next the part where you can add your bag details. So as you click on my bag, it comes up with all the options for your bag. You're able to input the clubs that you have and which ones are active at that time. So if you're swapping clubs in or out for winter or summer or for Lynx courses or for Parkland, you can easily do it here. It's no problem, it takes two seconds. These details though are based on your input. So this is not intuitive, it's not intelligent, it doesn't track all your club use and give you the averages. It doesn't take into consideration temperature or slope or conditions or whether you're shooting at the rough or the fairway. It very much is based on what you tell it. So if you tell it it's wrong, it will be wrong. If you tell it that you hit a 7 iron 170 yards and you only hit it 135, it's going to be your problem when you get the wrong club on the wrong hole. So although I think this is very useful and very handy, and I think it is something that will benefit mid to high handicappers, you have to know your distances. So for me, something that I would propose to any high handicapper is still go and get gap tested because you can lose shots just by picking the wrong club. And we've got enough hassle as it is trying to lower our scores to not try to do it with the wrong clubs. And there really is every club you can think of here. I've just recently invested in a 3-iron, a Gap R, and it is fantastic. However, it doesn't get me 241 yards, it gets me 220, so I'd better update that. But the rest is relatively accurate and something I can work with. So if we head over to the performance section, you can see at the top the handicap the average score, which was mentioned on the profile page, but also down here it shows all your rounds. So you can click on the latest round here for 86 at Abbey Hill, or you can click and look at all your rounds that you've got saved. So let's have a look at some of my early ones. Let's see what the worst score I can find is. Oh, wow. Wow, 38 plus 38 plus 43. 43 over, eh? Whoa, that's golf. There we go, we have a winner. 45 over at Caddington Golf Club, the blue course. It is in October, so perhaps I can blame that it was weather related. However, in December, I seem to have shot two shots less. So that just shows the, the level of atrocious that I have been in the not too distant past. And now you can start to see that the general correlation is a better scoreline. If you're on the pro version, of course, it does give you a lot of extra features for helping with you reducing that score with some of the data that it provides. Now, the statistics, this is something which you get with the pro version that I think is very beneficial for a mid to high handicapper. It doesn't bombard you with hundreds and hundreds of stats and strokes gained this and strokes gained that. It is quite easy to follow. For example, the driving accuracy, you will see that um, I hit fairways 50% of the time. I don't believe that's entirely true. I think sometimes when I put my scoring only into the app, perhaps I'm not always clicking the right button for where my drive ended. I don't use hole 19 every time now for use on the course, but I do still keep all my scores in there. So perhaps that's the reason why that's uh, like that. However, it does show you some interesting information and I'm definitely uh, a slicer of the T. And this stat would show that. Now, I imagine if I filled this out more accurately and correctly, it would show that that percentage is far higher than 25.7%. And actually, I'm probably right of the fairway a lot more than I am in the middle. And also, you're able to do the last 10, last 20. So, for example, we can see that in the last five, there's a different shape 
to what there was in the last 20. So I've clearly started to work on that and you can see it is working. Greens and regulation, very, very useful piece of information. Again, it's not fantastic in depth, but it does give a high or mid handicapper something to work on, something to understand if they've never done any tracking before. So I think this is very useful. The average scoring as well, it will show where a player is going most wrong. So it will indicate if you are getting so many double bogeys on par threes, or if you're doing quite well on par fives, and it means that in future you should perhaps attack and be more confident because you do do well on them. And it will give you a whole breakdown of your entire percentages. As you can see there, I have one eagle, uh, and that is my 0.4% of all my holes. Sadly, the most common is a double bogey. And again, just to point out, scores by par. So it turns out that I'm almost as bad on par fours as I am par fives, which is interesting. So perhaps in the future, I need to be a bit more aggressive on par fives. And par threes clearly could do with some use. They're the easiest way to drop shots. Uh, but my local course is actually quite hard on their par threes. So perhaps that's why the stats are like this. Pattern stats, very important. Green and regulation, sometimes it's a bit of a skewed stat because you might have greens and regulation uh, because you're improving, but your putting stat will go up. Just because you're getting on the green because you're improving as a golfer doesn't mean you're closer to the pin. So sometimes your putting stats can actually go up. This does help you guide you a little bit and it will give you some background information. It's not the be all and end all, but again, for a mid to high handicapper, it gives you something to work from the start. Recovery performance. Again, if you're a high handicapper, you're gonna see these being pretty terrible at the beginning and I am no exception. I'm pretty useless from the sand. Pretty awful at scrambling and I very rarely get up and down. But you can see here and you can start to see if it's been improving over the... No, it got worse. Brilliant. The feed part of the app is something which I think could be perhaps improved and it might just be my personal usage of it because a lot of people I know do not use Hole 19 and there's no kind of social interaction. It doesn't feel like a social media app. Uh, however, Hole 19 are trying to improve on this and I suppose if you're part of a society that do all use Hole 19 and you use it for your tournaments and you use it for your club games, then it's something that could be really harnessed and utilised, adding comments, adding photos. It could be something that can grow. For me, it basically just tells me what I've done and what Hole 19 are advertising. That's pretty much all it has. But Hole 19 do share some interesting things on here uh, and it's definitely not a case of they're spamming you a load of crap. It is stuff that can be of interest. So what happens when you actually use the app itself? So if I was to be playing on the course now, obviously I'm not, I'm in my dining room, but if I was, I would go to my synced courses here. I would go to Windmill Hill Golf Club Summer and I would start my round, easy. So if you want to go for the easiest option first, it's just called scoring. Uh, you could have match play, straight play, uh, or the Stapleford, so you're able to change what options you would like on that, and you can select whether you want it to be counted as a handicap round or not. I don't really understand why Hole 19 does this, because it's not an official handicap, so it's just for your purposes, really. I suppose if you're maybe part of a society or a club that use Hole 19, then perhaps it could be of interest. But for me, why does it care if you have to tell the handicap round before the round, not afterwards? But anyway, it's there. I always press it and I always go around when I use it. But as I mentioned before, I do give myself mulligans. I do drop a ball if I can't find mine. I don't cap my ball when it goes out of bounds sometimes. So it does skew my data somewhat on hole 19 and, and it does give me a handicap, which is not actually reflecting of my real handicap. You're also able to track your health information. No idea why you want to do that, but apparently you can. And it links to your uh, Google account. I wear a Fitbit, so for me, there's no need. GPS only. So as you'd expect, this is the GPS only. And then you have the shot by shot, which goes into a lot more detail. So let's go with the GPS only because it's the most simplistic. It loads up the GPS for the golf course. It will already download your golf courses and sync them. So if you're going to play a course in advance, you can download it a week before, have a little look at the holes, gives you an idea of what kind of uh, distances and clubs you may need to use. So here on the first hole at Windmill Hill in Milton Keynes. And as you click on it, it can move it up or down and you can see how brave you want to be if you're trying to take the, the big stick out and get to 250 yards. What would that leave you in 
It's a three iron, no chance, never gonna happen. Not for me, I can't hit a three iron off the ground. So you may want to adjust and move it further back, maybe hit a three iron in and then hit a seven iron or a pitch and wedge. You're still able to do the track shot. So for example, you can uh, measure the distances between your previous shot and the next shot. But it doesn't log anything, it doesn't track anything. You move on to the next hole, it just gives you the GPS. So this is easy to use and you get this with the free version. So something that's very useful, even for the high handicappers, it does give you something to work from if you don't want to spend any money up front. The second option I'm going to show you is the scoring option. So again, this is quite simple to use, quite easy to manage. And as you go in the course, you can just do it yourself. Or you can do it afterwards. It's no problems whatsoever. So you just press start round. It syncs up to your map that's already downloaded at this point. And again, shows you the hole number one at windmill. When you finish the hole, you can simply click the right button there and move on to the next hole. Add in your strokes, add in your putts, add in your sand shots, add in your penalties. And then this is where you put your fairway left, right or centre. So this is the basic stat that it uh, found earlier on. So this is where I find it can be a bit misleading because for example, if I hit my driveway a few yards off to the right, I often just leave it and say that it was on the fairway. So this is perhaps why some of the stats could be skewed. So you have to be quite ruthless with that. But this is where you enter it in. And then you simply go next hole. And at the end you get your scorecard and you can see where you've gone right and where you've gone wrong. And finally, the full shot by shot feature. So this is the main reason most people I think want the Premium Pro and this is how it works. Go shot by shot, start your round. Now similar to the other two versions, okay, got it. Uh, you have to uh, put your T, so you can either have your default or your GPS position. So sometimes if we're playing winter tees, it's actually quite useful to put your GPS because it will be different to the default tees. So again, the default tees, it can be a little bit misleading because you might be three or four, five yards, 10 yards different to perhaps where it thinks it is. And sometimes you can look at one of your drives and think, hey, I'm, I'm hitting 280 yards. You're not, you're hitting 255, but the app doesn't know that. So it can be a bit skewed, but don't worry about it too much. At this point, you're just trying to get a rough indication. And ultimately, sometimes you might hit a 255 and it says it went 240. So it swings and roundabouts, really. So it works in a similar way. You still get the GPS here, so you still get to see where everything is, where the danger is. Uh, at Windmill, as you can see, we have a phenomenal amount of trees. So that is the how that works. And then what would happen? You would tee off, hit your driver, say 250. 40 odd yards for me it will be over here somewhere on the wrong hole because I slice it and then as I go across to go and find my ball somewhere in the rough uh, it, I'll know that it's roughly 240 yards I'll get to that point and sometimes what I like to do when I tee off is just move that little marker little tip move the marker to where you think it's gone and then when you walk there you can start walking around and the amount of times I found my ball by doing that it does give you some kind of indication of how far away it is and if you know you hit your driver 230 yards you can then Plop it down there, 232 yards, have a little look around, hopefully you'll find your ball. As you get down there, you'll then tap the button down here, you can see the little plus sign, and it will record your shot. Now obviously I'm in my dining room, so it thinks I've shot my driver zero yards. But ultimately that would be all the way up here. And then from the next shot, it will start to tell you the distance and you can go forward shot by shot doing the same thing. So this is really useful. This is where you do start to get some information. You do start to see what shots that you hit well and what clubs you may struggle with. When you land on the green, and this is something I don't like very much, when you land on the green, you then have to walk up to your ball, stand over your ball, wait for the GPS, the satellites, wherever, to gather where you are or where they think you are, and then press the button, green. And then it logs that you're gonna be adding some putts afterwards. So this can be really, really frustrating. And I have had people shout at me saying, Christian, hurry up, hit your bloody putt. And I'm not focusing on my putt because I'm trying to focus on the GPS, getting my position accurate, not thinking that I'm actually putting from the sand on the wrong hole. So it is kind of annoying, but it does generally work. Uh, and it does allow you to track your, your greens in regulation and your putting. So it is a bit tricky. They are getting better and the GPS is getting better, but it does still happen and it really can be quite frustrating. So as you add that on, let's say that we hit the green from whatever it is, 450 yards in a 
wishful thinking, it comes up down here with the putt. So as you press that, you can go up to the top and press the, the putt bar. And the putt bar will tell you how many putts you've had. Wow, eight putts. Have I ever putted eight times? I have putted seven times once, a long time ago. Eight times though, wow. Um, so you press two putts and you put in the hole and that's it. It says your five shots, that's what you've hit. Obviously this is a ridiculous hole, I wouldn't be able to do this in reality, but it's just to give you an understanding of how the app works. One thing that can be quite annoying is if you duff a shot and then you have to walk three yards, get your phone out and press add a shot. It is a bit annoying in my experience, it does the players off that you're playing with, but you have to do it if you wanna try and track your performance and they will understand when you get better at golf. Another thing you can do is just leave it. Just do it after the hole or do it when you get back to the clubhouse. You don't have to do it there and then. You can change this and edit it afterwards. You can also go down and have a look at your strike list at any point. So if you want to remove that shot, for example, it's very easy. It's fairly self-explanatory to use. You can add a shot in. You can do the driver and you can add a penalty if you want. One thing that I really don't understand with hole 19 and something that is worth noting is if you hit your shot out of bounds with your driver and you hit another one, sometimes I'm a bit confused as to how you're add, meant to add the penalties because it doesn't work very intuitively, but I suppose you'll figure it out. You press the shot, add another shot, and then add the penalty. I suppose it's the way round you're meant to do it, but then for me, then it logs a shot that's zero yards for the driver, so not really sure how that works. Leave a comment, maybe you know how it works. Uh, maybe that's why my scores are different. Maybe that's why it says I've got a 16 handicap. Um, and also, again, you can go and have access to your bag here so you don't have to go back and forward to your settings if you don't want to. And it shows your scorecard as you progressively go along. You finish your round, you finish your scoring. Then at the end, you just save the round. It will give you all the information, all the data there for the round, which is quite interesting. So before you go and order your first beer at the 19th hole, you can go through and have a look at all your scoring and how it worked. Um, obviously the round didn't take six minutes today and my longest drive wasn't 250 yards, but you get the idea. It gives you all the information you want to see and you can save the round to your feed or to your profile so that you can have a look in the future as we can here. So for Abbey Hill, I can have a look through, see all my scores, have a look at my driving accuracy, greens and regulation, my scoring, this was a very, very good day at the office. This was, uh, I think at the time, this was my best ever score. So I'm very happy to share with you. But even now I can see that, you know, my putting still could be improved. Green's regulation can still be improved. I had no sand shot, so perhaps that's why I did a good score. And it will show you here all the information. Okay, so the advanced statistics here, something very interesting. Um, and it, again, just gives you that little bit more information if you want to try and improve on it. Um, accuracy for fairways, greens and regulation. You can start to see if you're getting better or worse uh, and also see some more stats in just a different way of viewing them really. I don't think there's anything more beneficial in there than probably what was in this section in statistics. In fact, I have no idea what the difference is. But if we look at clubs, again, it gives you the average distances of driver. And again, this is a bit misleading because it doesn't know when you've hit a tree. It doesn't know when you've topped it five yards. I don't think we can all say that, oh, you know, if you hit one 200 yards and hit one five yards, that your average is going to be 102.5 yards. That's ridiculous. So it's just something to bear in mind. So this is testing out in the field. Now, this is one of the issues that I have with hole 19, that it's not intelligent in the way that it gives you any advice. We've just had a great shot here from um, the tee, and I've hit it 275 yards. However, as you'll see behind me, there's the green about there and I have a massive tree in my way so there's no way I can get there directly you'll see that I can't go over it um, and I can't really go under it so it's a bit of a tricky one also it's uh, suggesting that I hit an eight iron uh, 150 yards which is uphill uh, and the winds against so it's actually not particularly correct it's probably a seven iron even if I didn't have the trees in the way so it's just a typical example of how hole 19 doesn't perhaps give you everything that you need however if the tree wasn't in the way it's not bad advice and you could definitely uh, use that uh, to your benefit. Chipped out a 9-iron uh, and I can see there that I've got a, about 100 yards left to the green and hole 19 is telling me hit my gap wedge. Now for the middle of the green that's 
probably about right. So I think Arcos is saying the same. So it just shows hole 19. It knows my yardages. It says to the back of the green is a pitching wedge and to the front of the green is a gap wedge. So a little bit of wind in my face. So probably a good gap wedge might be okay. The pins at the front. So let's give it a go. Well, it was the right club, but I hit it massively left, but that can't really be faulted to hole 19. So once again, on the course, done an okay job. I'm here on the third tee at Windmill Hill. It's a par three. It's 133 yards according to the book. However, uh, it's 125 to the center, and that is normally my nine iron. That's usually what I hit here. Uh, and hole 19 has suggested a nine iron. So it seems pretty accurate on this. The conditions seem okay for pan round. A uh, little bit of wind uh, left to right, uh, but nothing in our face or changing the distance necessarily. So uh, nine nine's correct, and uh, hole 19's done its job once more. Uh, played the nine nine, absolute beauty. And to be fair to uh, hole 19, that is dead in the middle of the green. So it has worked. Still free putted. So overall on the course, it's performing well. It's telling me roughly similar uh, information to Arcos, uh, which I'm also using at the same time, just to give it a bit of a comparison for the GPS and the yardages. And so far it's doing quite well. Uh, the only thing it doesn't do, is, as I've mentioned, is it doesn't tell you the slope or the degree in which you're attacking. So if you're hitting downhill, it won't uh, tell the difference. But so you have to use your own initiative on that. Uh, but the club selection and the new a uh, way that you can drag the GPS to different parts of the green or what you're aiming for and it gives you the club uh, that's that's working fine it works just as well as Arcos uh, and at a step of the price can't really argue with it it does the job so should you spend 39.99 for the premium hole 19 features yes if it's what you are willing to pay and that's the budget you have i think it's very useful it has helped me 100 percent. it has helped me however there are better apps out there they just cost more money or different features things like shot scope uh arcos for example but if you're a high handicapper and you're just getting into it you don't want to spend thousands on equipment and apps and this that whatever you just want to have a bit of an understanding you don't want to keep asking or getting help from people and you just want to make your own decisions based on a little bit of information you can provide, then I think it's very, very useful. Have I had issues with the whole 19? Yes. It has crashed on me several times, which was very frustrating and really distracted me on my rounds. I did send that to the, the whole 19 customer services team and they did look into it and they were very quick to respond and apologize and uh, perhaps try to deal with the problems. I don't know if it was ever resolved. I have had problems as well with the GPS uh, where it may think when I'm putting that I'm actually on a hole 200 yards away. It's completely lost where I am on the golf course. And that's really frustrating. It's difficult because you're trying to concentrate on your sport. You're trying to concentrate on your game and it says that you're in the middle of the M1 when you're not. You're trying to putt for a double bogey. So it's something that I think isn't perfect, but generally it does work. I think the fact that it does allow you to have some kind of club selections are real positive, but you have to put in the information. So if you put it in wrong, it will be wrong. It doesn't understand slope. It doesn't understand when you have wind in your face. It doesn't understand the conditions, if it's hot, if it's cold, if you hit out the rough. It doesn't even understand or know if you're in a bunker. Even if you show on the GPS that you've landed in the bunker, you have to tell it you're in the bunker. It doesn't know. It's not intuitive. It doesn't know when a tree's in front of you. It doesn't know when you're punching out from a bush. So you might hit a five iron and it's saying, oh, you're only ever hitting your, well, it happens a lot with me actually with my hybrid. My three hybrid, I don't think I ever do a full shot of it. I can't, if I do it, it's a banana shot to the left and it, you know, it, it, it's a disaster. So what I tend to do is I only use it for the recovery shots. That, that's one of the reasons why they were invented as a recovery wood. So I use my hybrid to get me out of trouble, to punch shots 30, 40 yards under a tree to get them back into play. This app won't know that. So it, it can be very misleading uh, but you, it does give you something to work from and it gives you a basis to work from if you have nothing. If you're just looking at a hole and thinking, oh, I, I think that's 100 yards away, you have the GPS. The GPS is great. It does show you where the front of the green is. I would like it to be 
quicker for it to explain where the front and the back of the greens are. Uh, again, little tip, if you are a high handicapper, always look at the number for the back of the green because generally, if that's your very best shot, then you know you can make a very big adjustment in your club selection, perhaps go a club up and you're still gonna be plenty safe. The GPS does help you with things like knowing where the water is, knowing where a bunker is, seeing how far away that tree that you have to clear is. It does help and it's better than nothing. So I would urge you, at least if you have nothing, download the whole 19 app, at least the basic version. Have a little go on it and if you like it, go with the pro version. They do a free trial version now, so that's something you can have a look at, give it a little go, see if it is worth that $39.99 a year. You can say you can have a go at it yourself. Give it a bash, see what you think. Let me know on your comments below. I'd also be really interested to see what people think of the wearable side of it, and I think it's something which could make it stand out from other apps being better. Not so much for the detailed analysis and statistical, but just the ease of using it. Just having a little button on your watch, you just press the button and it tells you how many shots you have and you log it at the end of your, of your round. I think that's something that's fantastic. And a lot of people, they just want the basic distances to the green. They don't need to know all the information. So perhaps that's something that could work. I'll be very interested. I don't have an Apple Watch, so for me it's pretty useless. But it'll be very keen in the future. I did message Hole19 about nine months ago and asked about if they would ever be using the Samsung uh, Galaxy or the Samsung watches. At the moment they don't. I think they do have the Garmin's, uh, the very nice expensive fancy watches that Rick Shields wears. They do work on the app so then you're able to see the distances and it's a lot more information. If you're enjoying this video please like and subscribe. I'll be releasing weekly content aimed at the mid to higher handicapped golfers. Hole18? Hole18? Where's that fly? How did a fly get in here? Also in the performance section is the the pet deck. But mention men although a monthly, yearly, and six monthly, six monthly. Is that how you say it? Six monthly.